Is Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias actually funny? Let's find out. Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. I mean, it took me four times to even say the man's name. I've actually never seen a special from him before. But when my people and my subscribers tell me I need to look somebody up, we looking them up. I want to know why you like him. Uh, why you guys, uh, you know, have you ever been to a show from him? You know, tell me a story. Let me know why you actually into him. Uh, me, I like savage comedy. I like when a comedian can say whatever he want to say. I feel like a comedian should not be restricted to what he say on a stage at all. And, yeah, pretty much it. Um, if you go to my channel, you'll see I got other uh, comedians on here you guys might appreciate. I want to get this uh, video in particular to 500 likes. So if you're watching this, you're enjoying yourself, make sure you guys press that like button for me. And without further ado, let's get right into the reaction. You guys want to hear the sickest practical joke ever? But it's kind of twisted, though. Some of you might not want to laugh, so everybody has to agree they want to hear it. Yeah. Are you still recording this in the back? I want to try to put this up on YouTube later. <laughs> <laughs> you do me a favor? Could you zoom in a little bit more? I promise I won't move around a lot, but I want people to see my face if I do upload this story. <laughs> All right, I'll keep it within here. Ready? All right. You guys sure? I know nothing about this man, but I do believe in the universe. This man manifested his destiny. He's already a big deal. The fact that he knew his destiny, you got to know your destiny. Let me just remind y'all that before we even get on past this point. You guys sure? Yeah. All right, here we go. Craziest practical joke ever. I'm supposed to do a show in Northern California with my friend Martin. We usually fly, but this particular day I was having problems with Southwest Airlines. They wanted me to purchase an extra seat for somebody who wasn't traveling with me. <laughs> Take your time, you'll figure it out. Anyway, so he said, the hell with this, let's just drive. So we jump in the car, <coughs> head north. Usually it's about a six hour drive. We're passing through the city of Fresno, and as we're passing through, we see signs on the side of the freeway that say, performing this weekend at the Radisson Hotel directly from BET's comic view and Showtime at the Apollo, comedian G. Riley. And I look at Martin, my buddy, right? I'm like, dude, G. G. Riley's in town. Yeah, I haven't seen him forever. G. Riley's an old comedy buddy of ours. So we're like, let's stop by the hotel and say hi. So we pull into the parking lot. <laughs> we walk in the hotel. I tell my buddy Martin, I said, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the front desk and I'm gonna crank call his room. He goes, what are you gonna say? I go, I'm gonna tell him that I'm the front desk and that I just received a gift basket for him. What's so funny about that? I'm gonna describe the gift basket to him over the phone, and I'm gonna make all the items that are in the basket become items that stereotypically a black person might like. Wow. <laughs> He's like, you're crazy. I go, I'll tell you what, we got two hours to kill. How about this? How about we go to the supermarket and we make an actual racist gift basket? <laughs> And we'll have it delivered, and we'll wait outside the door to see what happens. Yo! I said, are you down? Quick question. How would you feel receiving a racist gift basket? You got to let me know in the comments. Let me know, and what would your racist gift basket consist of? So we go to the supermarket, and we proceed to design the sickest practical joke ever. So we go inside the store, and we're like, okay, we need a shopping cart. So we got a shopping cart, and we're like, I said, are you down? <laughs> So we go to the supermarket and we proceed to design the sickest practical joke ever. So we go inside the store and we're like, okay, we need a shopping cart. So we got a shopping cart and we're like, all right, first thing we need is a basket. So I find an old Easter basket that's on clearance, you know, and I take out the grass and the little plastic eggs and we start going up and down the aisles. First item I grab is a small little personal fried chicken. Wow. I see some of you are laughing right now. So I'm like, oh my God, where's he going with this? A couple of black people in the room were like, a couple of black people were like, motherfucker, this better be funny. <laughs> Listen, if you get offended, easily get off this channel. We're not here for, so, uh, you know, snowflakes. You got to have half heart on this channel. We're here to be funny. Everybody can get joked on. So if you can't take it, please remove yourself. This is for people to let loose and have a good time after the long ass week that we have. Okay, this better be funny. <laughs> 
Give me a second. I'll finish the story. So <laughs> we do. And I heard you already. You raise his ass right here. He goes, what about watermelon? We found a little tiny personal <laughs> one. And we put it in the basket next to the fried chicken. Wow. Here's where it gets interesting. Wow. We get employees of the store to help us finish design the basket. And you'd be amazed how comfortable people get with you when they know you're doing something that is wrong. <laughs> One guy is stocking a shelf, and we walk up to him, and we're like, excuse me, sir, can you help us out? What do you need? My friend Martin and I are trying to make a racist gift basket for our black friend. Can you think of something we can put in here? Without missing a beat, the guy was like, ah, you gotta have Kool-Aid. <laughs> at the end of the aisle on the right. Malt liquors and XL over the back of the store. <laughs> By the time we hit the register, we got a shopping cart with Kool-Aid, freaking fried chicken, watermelon, grape soda, oh barbecue, potato chips, sunflower seeds, an ebony magazine, a Chris Rock DVD called Bigger and Blacker. <laughs> Here's the icing on the cake. We get a greeting card that's on clearance from Halloween, and it has a picture of three ghosts on the front of the card wearing sheets. <laughs> I tear up the part that says, Happy Halloween, and on the back of the greeting card, I write, Welcome to Fresno, the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, my God. And we stick it to the basket. <laughs> so we made it all nice and pretty. <laughs> all ass back to the hotel. Oh, my God. We pull up. <laughs> we walk in. The basket's all hot from the chicken, right? So I'm like, ah, ah, ah. We get to the front desk. It is too perfect. There's a black girl behind the counter. Oh, my God. As soon as I put the basket down, she's like, is that chicken? <laughs> Ooh, let me see what you got. Hold on. First off, everybody loves chicken. I mean, people always talk about black people just love chicken. Look, if you love chicken, right, I do. Come on now. Everybody loves chicken. I've been every, every, I've ate around every culture in the world. Well, majority of every culture and everybody loves chicken. I mean, come on. We got to clear that up. Come on, black people. Let's clear that up. Come on. We we love chicken. So does everybody else. So do my Latinos. Come on, man. As soon as I put the basket down, she's like, is that chicken? <laughs> Ooh, let me see what you got. Hold on. What is it? What's wrong? I go, let me explain. My name is Gabriel. This is my friend Martin. We're comedians, and we're about to play a really crazy practical joke on a friend of ours <laughs> named G. Riley. Oh, the guy that's on the flyer? Yeah, the guy that's on the flyer. He's, we're friends of his. We're comedians, and uh, that's, that's why you can smell uh, fried chicken, because we're playing a, a really messed up practical joke. We made a racist <laughs> gift basket, and that's why you also see watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, ooh, that is so wrong. <laughs> You need Jesus. That's what you need right there. Girl, you got to come see this. You got to come see this. <laughs> I love his go, voiceovers. We think it would be hysterical if you were to deliver the basket for us. Oh. She lost it. Oh, hell no. Uh-uh. I know you didn't just ask me to take that to a black man. You out your damn mind, sucker. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord, give me the strength. Give me the strength Jeez, to not kill Nacho Libre. <laughs> yo, he is good at the voiceovers. I like that right here. I never knew that he was this good. I suck a, ooh, Lord. <laughs> Lord, yeah, give me the strength. Yeah, he nailing it. He nailing give it. Give me the strength <laughs> to not kill Nacho Libre. <laughs> he called him Nacho Libre. Look here, I am not doing it. Hell no. Nah. I'll give you 50 bucks. Where that motherfucker at? <laughs> we follow her to the hotel room. Oh. We hide and she knocks on the door. He opens the door, sees a beautiful black woman standing there holding a gift basket. She's like, this here basket is for you, baby. And she hands it to him and he's like, thank you. Closes the door. She walks away and my friend Martin and I are hiding by the elevator and she's like, y'all still going to hell. <laughs> So she jumps in the elevator, we walk over to the door, and we start listening on the door. This is what we hear. Shh, 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 shh. Woo! Chicken! <laughs> oh, she cool Mount liquor! <laughs> He's getting more excited. Every single item he finds. He gets to the greeting card. Welcome to Fresno, the Chamber of Commerce. Hell yeah, that's what I'm saying. They know how to hook a brother up. <laughs> <laughs> then we feel him flip the card over because his voice changed. He's like, yeah, man, I can't believe it. What the fuck? 
Next thing we hear, racist bastards. <laughs> when we heard racist bastards, we lost it. We're like, ah! Oh, we got them. We got them good. We're making noise in the hallway. Housekeeping is freaking out. ¿Qué está pasando allá? ¿Qué andan haciendo? ¿Qué andan haciendo? Shh. No me calles, hija, tu pinche madre. Pinche gordo, cabrón. Te voy a agarrar con la escoba. We had to chill her out. We couldn't take it. We're laughing. We're crying. We knock on the door. He yells, who is it? Too easy. Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> this fool runs over the door, opens it, and he's got his fist up like he's going to get crazy. And he sees Martin and I, and he's like, oh, damn. Oh, I know it. I know it. What's up, G? Did you like your basket? Man, that was messed up. <laughs> Did you like it? Motherfucker, I love all that shit. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. Another two seconds, I'd have been looking for a white girl in that basket playing. <laughs> He's how funny. How could you do that, man? How would you like it if I did that to you, Gabe? Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, how would you like it if I had a maid over there bring your ass a piñata? <laughs> and that sucker was full of candy and nachos and chimichangas and tacos and burritos and a blanket with a big-ass bottle of tequila. What would you say? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yo, first time ever, Fluffy. Yo, he is hilarious. I got to give it to him. He is hilarious. Yo, his voiceover game is out of this world. You know, um, that element, you know, I like that element from, like, a lot of old older comedians did that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, obviously, this was done, you know, a couple years ago. So, uh, let me know more recommendations on what I should do from him, man, because I like his comedy. I know if I don't like it, I'll let you know. Um, if you enjoy comics, uh, you know, comedy like this, comedy reactions like this, what I want you guys to do is subscribe and hit the top bell. I'm at 39,000. I'm trying to get to a million, and I'll see y'all on the next one.